Hi! Hey there! <laughs> we're late today, but hey, technical difficulties, um, we're okay. We tried to play a song. It was um, Be the Light by Tom Rett. I guess it's got all, all kinds of other singers in there. Man, all kinds of people. Yeah, that was something. Yeah, Rita was in there, all kinds of. And we had all kinds, yeah, Keith Urban was in there. Uh, all kinds of problems, technically. Um, figured out what the problem was. Actually, we had two problems but nobody cares. Um, so we decided to play another song, Four Tops. I'll be there after that. So. And, you know, and that's fun. You, you substitute a couple words and all these songs, and they do have really good meaning, which is obviously why we play things like that. So. All right. Sweatshirts and T-shirts that you could get, but th these are specifically for people in IT. Okay? So, no, I will not fix your computer. <laughs> And this one, you know, you've seen the ones of the, the ape and the progression to, um, you know, yeah, home, yeah, yeah. and up, up, and then. And then it, when you get to the top, it starts bending over again until you're uh, crouched over a desk working on a computer. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And here, uh, most computer problems are caused by a loose nut between the chair and the keyboard. <laughs> yep. And uh, an old IBM type key punch card, old school. That's really I used to work on those machines. I was one of the only, I was one of the last technicians in the country that could work on one of those. Used to travel all over working on them. So. Uh, there are 10 types of people in the world, excuse me, there are 10 types of people in this world, those who understand binary and those who don't. <laughs> don't believe everything you read on the internet. Yeah, I know, no laughter about that one. So. Too close to the truth. Yep, yeah. yep. Have you tried turning off and on again? <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Just yeah. did. Yeah. Just did. Yeah. And and we as humans need to reboot now and then. Oh gosh. We need that yeah, we do. We do. We do. Uh, hey, welcome to the first day of spring. Yay! Yay! Yay. And to the only church in the universe that plays the Doobie Brothers to start their services. I know for a fact that's true. I know for a fact. Uh, Tuesday is National Goof Off Day. You're in for that. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, meditation after services and A Course in Miracles at 1.30, William and Sandra. And A Course in Miracles on Thursday with Josie um, in the evening. And then, yeah. Um, and then... That's oh, that's class yeah. cancer. Okay, canceled. that that, 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 that class is never mind. Oh, one o'clock. Yeah. Okay, it has one thirty. So okay, yeah. sorry. Thanks for saying that. Yeah. One o'clock. One o'clock. <laughs> calendar slightly off. That's okay. Be there. It's be there. Be square. Enough. It's close. It's close. We do have a couple of veteran saints by the name of John Lennon and George Carlin. Yay, George and John. And John said, "The only hope for us is peace." Violence begets violence. You can have peace as soon as you like if we all pull together. You'll, you're all geniuses and you're all beautiful. You don't need anyone to tell, tell you who you are. You are what you are. Get out there and get peace. Think peace, live peace, and breathe peace. And you'll get it as soon as you like. Cool. We can only hope. That definitely move towards that. Amen. And uh, George, uh, George Washington, George Washington's brother, Lawrence, was the uncle of our country. <laughs> I'll bet you didn't and know you that. Don't care. And I'll bet you didn't care. Yep. Yep. Uh, a poem written in honor of a bride and bridegroom is called an epitathalium. Okay. I know. I know. I told you, you're going to learn stuff today at church. <laughs> Yep. Who cares? Another one of those. Who cares? Uh, now I've lost my place, but I think I'm here. My idea is an agreeable per for an agreeable person is a person who agrees with me. <laughs> and beauty is only skin deep. It's always true, always has been, always will be. And a good laugh is sunshine in a house. That's true. Ta-da. If I don't put my thing back here, I will completely not know where I am in the universe. We wouldn't want to be lost Isn't it nice that that's all it takes? Yeah. Feel yeah. lost in the universe is just not a good thing. I may need to borrow that. Yeah. Uh, 
This is from Charles de Gaulle. Treaties are like roses and young girls. They last while they last. <laughs> yeah. And uh, for those. What did you say? Yo, I know, yeah, I know, I know, I know. For those who govern, the first thing required is indifference to newspapers. They're going to beat up anybody that's in office. It doesn't matter. That's their job. That's their job. Uh, democracy substitutes election by the incompetent many for appointment by the corrupt few. They're gay. Remember, these well, are all really mistake. old. These, have, these are not concurrent at all. At all. That just shows you, like I have said before, history just repeats itself. Over, over, and and over, over. And over. You know what a, a parapros dog doc, docian is? Easy to say. It's a figure of speech in which the latter part of a sentence is unexpected and oftentimes very humorous. Like, he who laughs last laughs slowest. <laughs> Is it wrong that only one company makes the game Monopoly? <laughs> Women sometimes make fools of men, but most guys are do the do-it-yourself type. <laughs> men, uh, men say women should come with an instruction manual, but since when was the last time that men stopped to read the instructions? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm going to just skip right past that one, and I'm going to do one of these. One of these, which one? Which one? I've done one of each. I did one in 2009 and one in 2010, so. Do the oldest. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the newest one, actually. I think it's funny. <coughs> it's, not, it's not tasteful, but it's funny. Here we go. Uh, this is one for everyone who has, ki has kids, had kids, <coughs> was a kid, knows a kid, uh, is going to have kids, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, daddy's gonna eat your finger. I was packing for my business trip, and my three-year-old daughter was having a wonderful time playing on her bed. At one point, she said, Daddy, look at this, and stuck out, stuck out two of her fingers. Trying to keep her entertained, I reached out and stuck her tiny fingers in my mouth and said, Daddy's going to eat your fingers, pretending to eat them. Um, I went back to packing, looking up again, and my daughter was standing on the bed, staring at her fingers with... She reads ahead. Well, don't read ahead. She's standing on the bed, staring at her fingers with a devastated look on her face. I said, what's wrong, honey? She replied, you ate, you happened, what happened to my booger? <laughs> Ta-da! Now that you're completely horrified. My job is done. Oh, <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> See ya. You knew that was what, what was coming on that one, didn't you? Yeah, you did. So. Sad to say, but I did. Mm -hmm. Predictable. Oh, just, just because, um, you know, with, I know I have a mask here somewhere. I had it. Um, about masks. We, uh, obviously, the, the uh, mandate is gone, and that's fine. We have never required them here since we've been back, but we've we always supplied them. And um, they're you know, still here. Is always free from then and now to wear them if you want. Jan and I, since we have so many things we need to be doing, we can't, still can't afford because, hey, it's still roaming around. So we're no, just playing it safe. Up. And she's got surgery coming up. Not so. this Tuesday, but Tuesday after, uh, they're going to go in and take out all the, pl the plate and the screws and stuff out. And the rod and. All yeah, the other stuff that's yeah, yeah. We're hoping anyway. Get rid so. of the hardware. Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's impinging on the tendon for my thumb, so that you have to take it out. Yep. And Don't I can't use my thumb, so. Huh? Don't forget to take it home. With you. I get to take it home with me? Really? I get to keep it. What? What can I do with it? Make a Christmas ornament or something. Oh, sweet! <laughs> I can I can make it into a car part of some sort. Yeah, so. Cool. Tell them when you go in, you want to keep it, and they'll clean it and give it back to you. Oh, oh fun! Thanks for that. Yeah, what a horrifying experience. <laughs> <laughs> frame it on the mantle. Hang it from a rearview mirror. <laughs> Hang it from the rearview mirror. That's Make a good one. Chime. Make a wind chime. There we are. Oh, look at all these opportunities. Yeah. I just want to forget. <clears throat> okay, 
So let's do a prayer this morning to start. Um, when Roy did the series or that uh, message that he did about the different kinds of prayers, the next one on our list is a prayer for healing. So let's do a prayer for healing. Join me if you would, please. Loving spirit of light, heal my wounded heart, divine one. Clear away betrayal and loss and grant me comfort. Heal my troublesome thoughts, divine one. Release me from worry and fear and grant me peace. Heal my damaged soul, divine one. Bring forgiveness and grant me peace. Heal my body, divine one. Restore my health and free me some, from suffering. Help me see my way to clarity and healing. May it be so. In the name of the Ascended One, Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> what I want to talk to you today, about today, uh, is as a request from one of our members. She has a grandson who's an empath, and she wants to know how to help him uh, deal with life because there's just so much going on. And so I figured there's lots of people who are in our in our room here, and there's lots of people online. <clears throat> so you could all benefit from some of the tools and techniques that I want to share with you. Because there's things that we can do. Suffering is, is optional. We don't have to. We don't have to suffer. Especially if there's ways to do it better. <clears throat> so as I was preparing for this message, I kept hearing this Bible passage. I thought, well, that doesn't really relate. I kept hearing this Bible passage, but does it really relate? Until I thought about it a little bit further, it totally relates. It totally <laughs> relates. So <clears throat> at first blush, it may not seem to relate to you. <clears throat> but just let's just, let's just take it in, shall we? This comes from Isaiah um, chapter 40, verse uh, 29, 30, and 31. I've read this a zillion times before. It's powerful stuff but I want to focus on a different focus this time. I'm going to start with verse 28. Do you not know, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not become weary or tired? His understanding is inscrutable. He gives strength to the weary. And to him who lacks might, he increases power. Notice the difference between might and power. Might is this fight, force of being able to make things happen, and power is this empowerment, the enabling ourselves to be uh, strong. There's a little difference there. Though youths grow weary and tired, and vigorous young men stumble badly, yet those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. Now the word wait here is also can be translated hope. Yet those who hope for the Lord will gain new strength. So it's like, what are, we, what are we putting our focus on? Strength isn't in the strength of our body or the strength of our being able to make things different that we don't like or we don't prefer. It's this ability to hope for the one that can do the work. They will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. And our message today is for the weary empath. Because being empathic, you feel everybody else's feelings. You feel what they feel. And it's exhausting, is it not? Anybody experiencing that? Now here's the thing. Sometimes people are born being empathic. And sometimes the trauma of the world can uh, create that empathic ability. When the trauma of the world creates that empath, it's because we have to stay on high alert and know what that other person is thinking and feeling before they even do. So that we can keep ourselves either quiet, go to our room, be quiet, don't, don't make any waves, because that person's gonna be volatile and we'll know it. That's what, what the, the traumatized empath is always on high alert and hoping to know ahead of time so they can prepare themselves. And they can be careful, and they can be cautious, and they can be safe. Well, that takes a lot of energy, that's exhausting. <clears throat> and then someone who is born an empath, um, there's a slightly different, if you stub your toe, I feel it. I not only feel it in my toe, I feel it in my guts. 
Have you ever experienced that? If you have a headache, I'll pick it up. I'll get a headache. That's an empath. And here's the thing. People say, oh, I don't want that. I, it's a curse. I hate it. Okay, here's the thing. It's the most beautiful blessing in the universe. Because empaths came to change the world by transforming pain into neutral. By transforming pain into neutral. And that's why an empath gets so tired. We cannot let go of negative energy because it's negative. We, can, we can't do any harm that way. Certainly we harm people because we're human and we make mistakes, <clears throat> but we can't just let, we can't draw in all this pain and then let it go. If we transmute it, we can let it go. But if it's not transmuted, we hang on to it. And it can take days. If somebody's angry and we feel their anger, I may get a headache the last three or four days and then it dissipates because my body is processing out the pain. My pro body is processing, processing out the negativity. Or somebody is really upset about something and I get terrible gastrointestinal distress and then my body eliminates it. Okay, it's the body is doing what the body came to do, which is transform that energy. But there's easier ways to do it. You like easy, don't you? I like easy. Why should we suffer? Again, suffering is optional. Uh, well, suffering happens. Misery is optional. Life is all about happy and, and difficulty and challenges. That's the human experience. We can't expect it to all just be roses and posies all the time. Winter comes, snows fall. Uh, and the heat of the summer, there's, that's life. Life has all of those aspects to it. And it's those heightened experiences that allows us to enjoy the sweetness when it's here. So we can't begrudge it when it happens, but we certainly can move through it more quickly than we are, right? All right, so the first thing I want, I want us to know, a lot of times I've taught this stuff in my classes, but again, with COVID, I haven't had any classes for years, two years plus in counting. So I want us to have power because we don't have the might to change things. I can't change how you feel. But if I pick up your feeling, I have the power to transform that. And if you have someone you love, especially a little one, you can help them in this transformational process. The older they are, the more you can get them involved. But if they're not old enough to do it for themselves, there's things that you can do to assist them, okay? So let's, let's look at some of these techniques. I have to tell you, <clears throat> I didn't come with an instruction manual. Phil can tell you that. <clears throat> he wouldn't have read it anyway. Um, but the first, when I first began to be awakened, um, I'd come out of a really traumatic uh, past. Um, and so I was pretty shut down till Phil came along. And as I began to relax and really allow myself to awaken and open up, I could feel everything. We went to a restaurant, and we were in Houston, Texas at the time. And from the parking lot, I felt this breeze and thought, oh, there's some harsh energy there. Don't know where that came from. I walked in the door, and as the waitress led us to the back table, I could feel that person was sad, that person was angry, that person was lonely, that person over there was in a big bind. They were really worried about something. And by the time I got to the table, I was just, oh, just frazzed, and I just had taken all that in. Impasse or the quicker picker upper. <coughs> we just are. We can't not do that. So let's do it a better way. Let's clear it out a better, faster way. So I sat down and I went, oh my gosh, that was just horrible. I accidentally rubbed my hands together and put my hands on the wooden table. And I said, dear God, as I did that, I felt this huge flush of energy and I felt better. A psychic flush. That was a psychic flush. So that's the first thing you can teach someone to do. First thing you can do, fastest, easiest way to clear yourself, rub your hands together really, really fast. And if you can put something on a wooden object, it's even better. So here we have the pews in front of us. If you've got a wooden table at home, whatever. But just put it on an inanimate object and just 
download that energy and I'll ask God to flush that through you and it'll just flush right on out. Can you feel that? Did you feel the big whoosh? How easy is that? We don't have to judge it. We don't have to go, okay, now I'm going to change sadness to joy. We don't have to do any of that. Just let it go. Let it go. We're so, we've got to figure it all out. No, you don't. Just let it go. Let it go. Now, if you have someone that you know that is either resistant to this sort of thing or is a child and they don't have the capacity to consciously do that, there's something you can do to assist them. <clears throat> if it's someone that you can touch, it's even better, like a child. And if you can put your hand on their heart or your hand on their back, and then the other hand, and I would suggest right hand to absorb, and the left hand discharge to the ground. If you don't have anything wooden to touch, just discharge it to the ground, left hand out and back and away. And just it'll flow through them, through you, into the ground. And you don't have to pick it up that way. Make sense? Easy peasy. Easy peasy. And this will really help discharge that energy. I mean, we talk about grounding all the time. And, and, and yet, if we're all caught up in stuff, it's really hard to get grounded. Ask me how I know that. <laughs> you know, and you can walk around thinking you're all grounded all you want, but when this stuff hits us, we're not grounded anymore. We're disconnected. We're disconnected from spirit and we're disconnected from the earth. So this process allows that energy to discharge and, and allows us to reconnect. And that reconnection, both spiritually and, and in, the, in the earth, is powerful and helps us stay neutral stay neutral. From neutral, and we can choose happy, and we can choose joy, and we can choose um, interest, and we can choose curiosity. There's lots of things that we can choose to do with ourselves. <clears throat> but it's coming to that state of neutral that's really, really, really important. Any questions so far? <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> and it's really important to, when we're doing this, to acknowledge to ourselves that we're not doing the work. We don't have the might to do this, but Divine Source does and can empower us to get what we need. So be sure and tune in. Tune in. And sometimes you have to do this first and then tune in and do it again. <laughs> because, well, again, we can't think when we're on overload, right? Thinking is, like, not there. So, um, I have shared this technique or this tool with a lot of people in the past. The next one. It's powerful, powerful, powerful. And then I saw something the other day as I was I talked to one of our members. I mentioned I've got an, uh, a tweak, and an advancement on that. And I had seen it, but I didn't know what it was for. And that came to me yesterday afternoon. So, yay, thank you, good timing. I love it when they come through. So I have talked to you before about a metallic mesh, have I not? Mm -hmm. Anybody not have heard the metallic mesh yet? Okay, so some online may not have heard about this. A uh, couple here. So <clears throat> you don't make this metallic mesh. It, it comes from divine source. It is created out of divine energy, not your own. So you don't sustain it. And once it's created, it just stays with you. <coughs> until you dismiss it. And you can dismiss it if you don't like it anymore. You can shift out of that. Most people that receive it are like, oh, thank God. I really needed that. So you get to choose what metallic energy you would like, whether it's titanium, aluminum, copper, uh, gold, silver. What are some other metals? Bronze. Huh? Bronze? Yeah. Hmm? Steel. Platinum, steel, yeah, so pick a metal, pick a metal, what would you really like? And ask then, yeah, divine connection, ask God, divine source, higher power, whatever there is for you, to weave for you a metallic mesh, and you will feel this energy, it's like a, a screen door, only it just floats on the outside edge of your aura, just floats there. So your energy is safe and protected within this field, mine is copper. 
What color? What are you choosing? Copper? Copper? What? What? Co <coughs> silver? Carol, what's yours? Platinum. 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 Mine's bronze and silver. Bronze and silver. And copper. 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 Titanium. Titanium. Good. Good. I have titanium on my list <laughs> for at least another week and a half. <clears throat> so the metal that you chose has energetic properties. Okay. So titanium is powerful and resilient, but it's flexible. It's flexible, but it's powerful, strong. Uh, copper is um, conductive. So energy that hits whatever your metallic, your metallic mesh is will have this embodiment of this energy that you choose. So if you chose silver, your re reflective mesh, your, your metallic mesh is reflective. So people can see what they're doing. They'll see, perceive on a different level. If it's gold, you'll see your own value. The other people will begin to see their value. And when we're in that place of value, there's less stress, is there not? Um, the, the copper tends to ground out energy. So if there's any negative energy, it hits that copper shield and just grounds it out. So silver will reflect it out. Um, gold will just harmonize it into whatever you need. So this is external stuff. So it never even gets to you. Now, as an empath, even if it doesn't get to you energetically, if you see someone hurting or suffering, you're going to pick it up anyway. You know, the eyes are the window to the soul. You're going to see a pain, and you're going to pick it up. So that's why watching the news, hearing any kind of what's going on in the world, this is devastating to an empath. It's exhausting to an empath. So with this metallic mesh now, this is going to give you a moment breather. And this will give you time to choose what you're going to do about this. Okay? Now, let's add the bonus, uh, the bonus round here. Where each thread connects with the next thread is a droplet of light. Can you envision that? And this droplet of light, its purpose is to do the transmutation so you don't have to. You don't have to think about it. So any energy, any negative energy that hits this, um, intentional or unintentional, will, won't be able to go through the, the spaces in the, in the mesh, where the mesh lines meet, and where the little droplets of light now are going to absorb this energy and transmute it for you. Divine source is going to do that for you. You don't even have to think about it anymore. How wonderful is that? That's an, a super added bonus. Now what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to draw your metallic mesh really close to your body. Can you do that? Just bring it in really, really close. Then it's like a hazmat suit. And what happens here then is if somebody is throwing a temper tantrum, being a brat, um, and that can be somebody who's 80 years old or somebody who's two. We all have brat moments. And maybe they throw something, throw a pen or something, and then they storm out of the room. Okay, well, who's going to clean that stuff up? Well, maybe, you, maybe you're stuck with that. You can go pick something up that has been heavily charged because objects hold energy. You can pick something up that's heavily charged. It cannot get through your metallic mesh, and, and then you can put it away. And in the meantime, your metallic mesh is neutralizing it. Isn't that wonderful? Now, when you bring that energy in really, really close, it should feel safe and comfortable, does it? And then you can let it float back out again. And this is going to be on autopilot. So if you're in a stressful situation, it'll come really, really close. And as it comes closer, the little threads get closer together, so you're even more protected. And if you relax, it just floats out there, and the spaces become bigger. You still will feel what you need to feel. An empath needs to feel their world or they're shut down and shut off. We don't want that. We want to be able to feel. We just don't want to be overfeeling anymore. Does that make sense? So what if you have a youngster that has uh, this stuff? If they're old enough to imagine, help them imagine it. And you, maybe they can't think of a metal. Maybe they don't get that part. Um, give them one. Show them a piece of gold. Say, ooh, we're going to put this gold. You can, can't go wrong with gold. 
And you'll notice if they, if they thrive with that, that's great. If not, dismiss it and do a new one. I hereby dismiss the metallic mesh. I'll bring it back. <laughs> and then you can replace it with whatever, with something different. But do that. Hold your hands out. Ask for God to give that one you love a metallic mesh that is perfect for them. And then you don't even have to decide. But if you want to choose, you can. I would choose gold if you, if you feel like you need to have a choice in that. Does that make sense? You can do this with little babies, and you can do this with, with young people. You can do it with teenagers. You can do it with adults who are not really open to this sort of thing. And bottom line, you're not hurting them. Do no harm. Do no harm. And if they reject it energetically, it'll go away. You haven't hurt them at all. Make sense? Okay. Any questions on that? This is really big stuff. Really big stuff. Make sense? Janice? Yes. Can you do that without them knowing you're doing it? Heck yes. Person? Sure. What she, did. she said, can you do that for an older person without them knowing it? Yes, it's like giving someone a blessing. Can you pray for somebody without them knowing about it? No harm, no foul. This is not harmful in any way, shape, or form. You cannot harm anyone with this. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. And if energetically they just can't abide it, it'll go away. It'll, it'll, it'll dissipate. Yes? I had bronze, and I didn't know what you said. Bronze. I didn't say anything about bronze. Um, what do you think the energy of bronze is? You know, we bronze baby shoes. You know, so it's about memory. It's about remembering who you are. It's about knowing who, who you are and the things that are not yours, you can let go. That's somebody else's pain. I can let that go. This is not my stuff. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any other questions? Or what was the platinum? Platinum. Uh, oh, that's... Um, that's an abundant richness. Platinum is, is, for me, it feels really sweet, but not sickening sweet. It feels sweet and precious and vital. Does that make sense? I'm not sure how that'll work in your world, but, uh, but it allows you to perceive things from that perspective. Does that make sense? Okay. Any other questions? So now you have power. You have no might to change what is happening in the Ukraine. But we have power to change how we feel. I have power to change how I emit my energy. And if I am in peace, and I am walking in integrity, and I walk in love, and I emanate that, guess what happens? We influence the people around us. Energy begets energy. And, and if I'm walking in this peaceful path, the person next to me may be disrupted. Well, as an empath, that energy can be absorbed, transmuted. What's going to happen to them? They can find peace. How beautiful is that? And I don't have to be burdened with their pain. Make sense? Yes, sir. And because this energy knows no time nor space, <clears throat> simply by keeping Ukraine in your mind, the peace you generate within yourself goes there. Yes. So they experience it yes. in the way that they can understand it or the way they can experience it. So, so it's nothing I'm doing. Exactly. Again. Exactly. And let's, let's, let's do that. Let's ramp that up just a little bit. Okay, yeah. so in your heart you have this intent for peace for Ukraine, safety for them. Mm -hmm harmony for them, healing for them. Now take that from your heart space and send it to all those little droplets. Mm -hmm. And from those droplets, it will emanate out to them mm -hmm. and to all certain people that are involved in that. Beautiful. So that's emanations. We are emanating energy all the time. And people are picking up our emanations all the time. What do you choose to emanate? Peace? Frustration, aggravation. <clears throat> well, sometimes there's times you just gotta emanate that frustration, <laughs> get out of it. 
That's part of the letting go process. We just hope we don't hurt anybody in the process, do it ourselves, oh, temper tantrum, get over it, slightly. <laughs> and then you're fine. And then you can, then you can emanate from a better spot. We talked last week about having that one more thing that puts us over the edge. And sometimes we just gotta cry it out. Or just be. Some people, some people um, run, and some people exercise, and some people uh, work really hard on something, and, and some people cry, and some people vacuum. I clean. I have to be careful, because cleaning when you're discharging energy, not always a good thing. I threw away the checkbook once, because it's cleaning and throwing and, you know, no. It's good to be mindful what you're, what you're doing, so I don't do that anymore. I find other ways to, to do that. Um, let me see if there's anything else. This divine assistance grants power that transcends circumstances. So we all have power over, the, over external circumstances, and we can assist ourselves in that empathic way, and we can assist others who are empathic. How beautiful is that? Let's do a guided meditation, shall we? Mr. Phil, if you would be so kind as to dim the lights. Now you already have had your, excuse me, your metallic mesh. And it's probably already done a lot of the transmuting. So you're probably clearer and more relaxed than normal. So rather than going through a relaxation process, we're just going to go straight into the guided meditation. And we're going to find our way to a wooded area, a forest area. Find your way to a forested area. Notice the beauty of nature. Notice the color that you see the colors that you see. And you're going to be finely tuned here. You're going to be able to pick up more energy here now than you ever have before. And I want you to notice the energy of the earth. As you're in this wooded area, maybe you're walking on pine needles, or maybe you're walking on fallen leaves, or maybe you're walking on moss or whatever, notice what you're walking on and notice the energy, the vibration of that. Often in a wooded area there are ferns. Notice the energy vibration of the ferns. It might slightly be different than the earth. Notice it, feel it, sense it. Notice the energy of the trees. Notice the energy of the bark, the branches, and the foliage, whatever that looks like. <coughs> Notice any moss growing on the trees. What's the energy vibration of that moss? It's safe to feel now. It's safe to experience what is in your world to experience. And now notice the sky. What is the energy vibration of the sky? Are there clouds in your sky? What is the energy vibration of the clouds? Are there birds in the sky? Are there birds in the trees? Hear their songs and notice their vibration. Notice how it feels to, to experience that. There may be other woodland creatures here as well. Notice them as well. Allow yourself to find a pathway. And this pathway leads you to a large clearing, and at the end of the clearing is a bluff. And you notice that you're standing on a place that is high above a valley below. And as you're standing here, a huge eagle appears, flies in, and lands next to you. And you're not afraid. This eagle is very powerful. 
And this eagle gives you a choice. You can either fly with the eagle, ride on the eagle's back, or you can transform into an eagle yourself. Which would you prefer? The choice is yours. If you choose to ride with the eagle, notice that there's uh, already a saddle. Climb on up into the saddle. If you choose to transform into an eagle and fly with the eagle that way, allow yourself to transform and feel your eagle wings grow. And as the eagle takes flight, you follow fearlessly. And you allow yourself to soar in the sky. A few wing beats and you're way away from the bluff and the clearing. You feel the wind. You feel the power and the grace of this flight. Allow yourself to bank to the left. <clears throat> Take a full circle. And now bank to the right. Take a full circle. You feel free and exhilarated. This is your rightful experience of life. Fly through the clouds now. <clears throat> and then fly back out into the sunlight. And either follow your eagle as it swoops down to the farmland below or swoop yourself down to the farmland below while riding on your eagle. And your eagle skims quickly over the flow of a, of a flowing river. It's exhilarating. And then a few strong, powerful wing beats and you're back up into the sky. You ride the, mo the currents with very little mo movement. It's effortless. The wind carries you. Allow yourself to fly back to the bluff and land. Then either dismount from your eagle or allow yourself to transform back into your human form. And your eagle has a gift for you. Receive it with gratitude. <coughs> and you have a gift for the eagle. Give that from a heart of gratitude. Say goodbye to your eagle in whatever way that you wish to do that. Allow yourself to see the eagle fly off. Know that you can meet with this eagle again at any time. Finding your way back to your pathway, back down into the forested area, from the forested area back into this time and space, back into the here and now, <sighs> refreshed and vitalized. And Mr. Phil, if you'll join me for the uh, communion, then I will be happy to uh, interpret any of your, the symbolism of your gifts here in a moment. I hope you enjoyed that. So a post from Tammy. She's down in, uh, in New Orleans. Hello, hello to New Orleans. Oh, no. I gotta do that myself, don't I? These are not too hard to do. They're not. Thank goodness. Either Nancy bought a brand new roof that works really great or um, that quality control issues. But I'm here, here. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Join me in prayer if you would please. Loving spirit of light, as we take this in, nourish our soul, nourish our spirit. Help us to feel renewed, empowered, and blessed. These things we pray in the name of Jesus, the Ascended One. Amen.
crinkling of papers. Join us in prayer again, please. Loving spirit of light, as we drink this in, help us to drink in life, all of it. Instead of shying away from it and resisting it, help us to flow with it. Thank you for the techniques that you have given to us. And bless us with healing and the ability to transform. Transform ourselves and the energy around us. These things we pray with deep gratitude. In the name of Jesus, the Ascended One. Amen. Amen. Take it from here, Phil. Okay. Here, take it from here. Where am I take it from? <laughs> right. Here. It disappeared. You buried it. I buried it. Oh. <laughs> And the screen comes down. I think you hit a button somehow. Must have. It's probably on the other side of the books. Yeah. Yep. Underneath. Underneath. I'm getting there. Let's go. There it is. <laughs> Never a dull moment. Never. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no volunteers, right? Oh, <laughs> thank you. Got them? Hold on, Nancy, I'll get them. Thank you. Thank you. As we were doing communion today, I had a thought that came to me. My heart has been hurting for the Ukrainians. And for their pets, those dogs over there are terrified, and they have nothing to do with this. But I realized as we were doing communion that they're okay. They may die in this conflict, or they may be hurt, but at their core, their spirit is light, and they are okay. Please give what you can to this wonderful church that allows us to come together and experience those kind of moments. And if you don't have any money, there are other ways. There's a PayPal and on the church website or send a check or just give us a blessing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Or Amazon Smile. Yes. I and mean, if you're going to order stuff from Amazon, that works great. Surprising how many people still don't know about Amazon Smile. But. And you've got to be careful yeah. to be in smileamazon.com. Oh, yeah, because it looks the same. I mean, it's identity. Yeah. You never know it's unless like it says it. Well, oh, they have changed the app. You know, the Amazon app that you usually use for shopping, if you already have contributed and have set up your deduction, it automatically does it now. You don't have to go smile.amazon.com. Yeah, it does pop up. You can set it up, but otherwise, it's working. Cool. Thanks for that information. Okay. So, anyone have any questions about their? I'll go see if there are any on online. Online. Okay. You want to? Yeah. Alan Finch said that she got a beautiful feather from the eagle and gave him an egg. Okay. <laughs> um, so the feather that she received um, is. Well, an eagle feather, this is like gift from spirit of knowing that you're connected, knowing that even though um, life is happening around you, that divine connection is always there. And by giving the egg, this is the willingness to begin anew, to start new. I hope that, I hope that helps. Uh, yeah? Uh, my eagle gave me a band that was on his leg. Can, can we get the microphone back there? Could somebody walk that back? That's just really helpful because people online can't hear a word. Even people up front can hardly hear. Marlena. Um, my eagle had a band that 
that was on one of its legs. Mm -hmm. It was a metal band, and it had numbers or letters or something. I couldn't read that, but that's what he gave me. Okay. Uh, and I gave him a fish. Okay. I wondered who had the fish. That was pretty funny. Oh, here, Lee. What about a fish for you? I thought that was funny. Um, <coughs> so the band around oh, the band around the leg. Uh, this is identification. So that means that you will know God's presence when you feel it instantaneously. And this is to link that in so that you have a sense of it all the time. Got that? Um, and then you gave the fish. So this is your willingness to, to share the love that you are. Your willingness to share. That makes sense? Awesome. Thumb can't quite do that yet. Anybody else up here? Coming. Microphone's coming. <clears throat> Um, I had, well, first of all, when we flew back, I flew back to an eagle's nest. Oh, nice. It had a bunch of little, little eagles in it, and she gave me one of the eagles, one of the babies, and I gave it back. Oh, so. wonderful. So that's pretty powerful. So this, this eaglet that you were given, so this is the innocence and purity of divine nature. And the fact that you gave it back, you gave it back because it needed its mommy. Um, but you also acknowledge to yourself that you have a right for that spiritual innocence. Um, and this, this is clear energy. And you have a right to be nourished and, and cultivated and taught by spirit on a whole other level. Very cool. Thank you for sharing. That's beautiful. Anything else? Did that ring true for you? Yes. Nancy, behind you. Oh, May. I became an eagle during this. And How I did that feel? It, it was so powerful. I love and, it. And the eagle flew, uh, flew with me. And then when we got back to the nest, I had a berry branch. A berry branch. A berry branch I gave to the eagle, and the eagle gave me a feather. Okay, so again, the feather is about that connection with spirit and you being able to, to be connected at all times. Um, the berry branch, let me ask about that for you. Did it already have berries on it? Yes, it did. What color berries were they? They were brilliant purple. Brilliant purple. Okay, so this relates to that divine connectedness. Um, so you're going to nourish your connection with spirit. And because there's multiple berries, there's lots of ways in which you can nourish that connection. And so you're going to be willing to be able to do that. Thank you. Okay. So I received from the Evo a small tree in a burlap bag. Okay. Like uh -huh. planted. And I gave to the Evo a little pendant with a piece of the metal mesh. That's Ooh. Metal mesh that I was Very cool. So, um, tell me again what the ego gave you? Uh, a tree. A tree. In the bur Do you know what kind of tree it was? It was some kind of evergreen. All right. So, and this is what ego gave you, right? Okay, so this is the ability to grow and always be green and always be flourishing. So there may have been times in the past where you might have felt as if you were dormant. An evergreen is just an evergreen all the time. So it's, it's, always, it's always flourishing. So this grants you that ability to flourish without the ups and downs of uh, feeling connected or feeling disconnected or or not as clear as you would like to be. Um, and you giving back divine source that, or the eagle, this um, piece of the metallic mesh, this is acknowledging that divine connection. And you know that this is acknowledging to your soul that divine source is the source of the power for that metallic mesh. And you can just rest and trust in that. Yeah. 
Anything else? Anything mm -hmm. online? Yes, dear. Scott, down in Florida, have woven mesh of many precious metals. Beautiful shimmering. Oh, awesome. Way cool. So whatever you need in the moment, you're going to get it. Your, your needs are met. Anything else online there, Mr. Phil? Quite a few, actually. Uh, Brock um, received a small wooden flute with intricate symbols and designs carved into it. Ah. And he gave a juicy salmon. Okay, another fish. <laughs> juicy salmon. Um, so for you, the salmon, giving the salmon back to, to the eagle, this is about knowing that divine source delights in you and being able to receive that information and be aware of that, be sturdy and strong in that. Um, and, and tell me again what eagle gave him. Uh, oh, the flute, flute. Yeah, yeah. See, I'm in another place, I'm just... Okay, so this is about being able to play your own tune in your own way uh, and harmonize with others in your world. Um, it's one thing to be able to be true to yourself and honor your own, your own journey and honor your own tune, but this allows you to harmonize so that you can play along with others who are also walking their sacred path. Hopefully that's helpful. There's okay. more, but you can... You there's can more? Remember. But wait, there's more. So um, I will touch base with the ones that are remaining when I get home and, and upload this to YouTube. So in the meantime, we'll call it a day here. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Let's do a uh, connection circuit for the ones at home. Rubbing your hands together really, really, really fast. You're still connected, you're still grounded, your metallic mesh is still active. Bringing your hands in front of you, this allows that energy to flow into your heart space to your left hand, left hand to right hand, right hand back to your heart. This connects that heart circuit and this opens you to receiving this energy on a higher level. This energy can clear, this energy can cleanse, this energy can bless. This energy can strengthen. So whatever energy is right for you in this moment, receive that. Bring that into your heart space. May you be sweetly blessed, and we will see you next time.